Hello, and welcome to another iClone 7 Academy tutorial. Today's topic will be getting started part 2 of the Curve Editor. In this tutorial, we will fine tune the motion of this beach ball by adding some squash and stretch. We will do so by creating some transformation keys as well as some curve editing. In the previous tutorial, we depict the bouncing by just moving it along the Z axis. However, the ball looked very stiff. To, to make this more believable, we decided to add the squash and stretch effect, which will allow us to depict the flexibility of the object in a much more realistic manner. Now, to do this, we will use the scale transform, which will allow us to change the shape while preserve the volume of the beach ball. So, let's get started. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this diagram to see how squash and stretch is being depicted. As the sphere drops to the ground, it will start to slowly stretch. Once it gets close to the floor and makes contact, the ball will squash, and when it bounces right back up, it will stretch back up again and regain its original shape. So let's go ahead and try to mimic this inside iClone. Okay, so let's go ahead and move forward in time to get that stretch happening. So about there, that looks good. And I am going to select the ball and I am going to go ahead and press R to scale. And I am going to stretch it. Okay. One thing to note, and uh, uh, remember, we need to preserve the volume here of the um, of this uh, of the beach ball here. Uh, however, before we do that and make the ball skinnier, uh, I want to show you that uh, something to to keep in mind is that when you actually uh, create uh, do uh, anything or modifications inside the viewport, you are actually creating keyframes for rotation. Uh, position and scale so you're creating keys for all of the curves and uh, having extra keyframes in areas you don't want or need is not is not good so what you need to do is you, you go you need to go ahead and remove the excess keys because notice here we used to have this nice beautiful acceleration curve and now it's broken because we added a key somewhere so uh, let's go ahead and remove all the unnecessary keys. I'm going to select all my position and rotation curves and I am going to click drag here and uh, just uh, just delete key or remove keys, this icon right there. Or you can press the delete key on the keyboard. So, uh, so now you know. All right, so we're going to be dealing only with scale as we mentioned before. So let's go ahead and select our curve uh, for scale. I'm going to zoom in by moving the mouse, by scrolling the mouse wheel so we get a little closer there. And uh, remember, we want to preserve the volume as we stretch the ball. So what we want to do is uh, make the ball skinnier. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the keys for both the X and the Y axis. And I'm going to move this down by pressing Shift and then moving down. This will lock it so it will not move sideways and notice that as I move this it makes the beach ball uh, skinnier so uh, we don't have to do this too much the squash and stretch doesn't have to be too heavy because the beach ball is filled of with air and air would not create the drag that if it was water for example so it wouldn't pull as much down so uh, let's just put a little bit of stretch but it doesn't have to be too much so that looks about right that looks pretty good all right let's go ahead and go for our squash now so we hit the floor and now we're going to go down in uh in the Z value here. So we want to squash this. And because we're squashing it, in order to preserve the volume, we need to make it wider in X and in Y. So let's go ahead and grab the keys there and move them upwards. I'm going to press the Shift key and move this up. And notice here we are making it uh, wider now. 
All right. Again, don't go too crazy because of the, remember a beach ball has air inside only. All right. So let's see what we have so far. I'm going to press the space bar now so we can see our animation. So it looks pretty good. Now we have the, the stretch and squash. Now we need to stretch again after we squash. And uh, let's, so we can do it two ways. Uh, we can re-keyframe things over here, or we can just simply uh, copy keys. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, inside the timeline editor, I'm going to go ahead and uh, copy this key and then just paste it on the other side. So now we have squash and stretch. Uh, so stretch, squash, stretch. Let's play it. So that's looking a lot more natural. Now, one thing to remember is that the stretching shouldn't happen as it immediately as it starts falling down, the sphere starts falling down. It actually happens as it gets closer to the floor when you, when when it gets almost touching the floor so we want to preserve the volume uh, until we get about halfway the animation of going down and that's when we want to get that started uh, stretching so let's go ahead and do that and to do so I'm gonna go ahead and use the mouse wheel to zoom out or you can click in in, in an empty area over here and that, do a frame by clicking in this icon over here, very handy feature. So like I said, about halfway here, we want to preserve the shape, so we wanna keep this values at 100. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this cool feature here, which is add keys, keyframes uh, for all curves, and that is all curves that are visible only, which is a very handy feature, because if you do it here, remember, it will do all nine axes, uh, all nine um, curves, in here, it's only the ones that are visible. So let's go ahead and click in here. And uh, you will notice now if I add the position key by pressing Control and click in here, simply for display and do an, a frame again, actually deselect the keyframes there, you will notice that there is no uh, new keyframe on that curve or, or, or the rotation for that matter or position. They are untouched here. So uh, that's good. All right, so let's go back to our scale where we added those keyframes here, and uh, <clears throat> let's zero. Let's make them one hundred because uh, there, we don't want any change in scale at this point. So you can actually select the keyframes here and type the value here, and it will put them for all of those keyframes. Now, by doing that, you are forcing the tangents to cross. And what we want here is we want a steady value of 100 until we reach this point here. Now, to clean this up, you can use the auto key. And what the auto key is, we take the smallest value and it will normalize it or equalize it. And then it will try to transition as smooth as it can to the maximum value that is after that key for the handles. So now you have a very nice curve going into from from uh, uh, untouched to scaled. So that looks really nice. Let's do the same thing. Uh, now that we've done this, let's go ahead and copy this key to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and say copy, right click copy. And about here, I'm going to go ahead and paste. So now we have a nice squash and stretch action going on here. All right. So we might want to maybe smooth this out uh, for the squash and stretch part. So because it maybe ha it's happening a little too fast here. So we might want to smooth this out. It's happening in just two frames. So what I'm going to use now is a, a nice feature here. So I'm going to select all these keys right there. I'm going to frame them and then use this tool over here, which allow us to key uh, to scale keys as a group. And I'm going to make these guys a little bit wider going this way and a little bit wider going this way. This will smooth out a little bit more the area that I want to work with. And now uh, let's go ahead and uh, go back to our move tool and play it back. Okay, that's a little smoother there. And uh, we still have the situation where uh, we are squashing 
We actually, yeah, we're squashing ahead of schedule here, and we do not want that. So, uh, until we actually hit the ground. So, what I'm going to do here is, is I'm going to actually add a key. I'm going to zoom out here and uh, frame all the curves here. And now, uh, instead of adding multiple keys uh, to all the visible curves here on the display, I'm going to switch this to uh, Add Key. And this will allow us to add key to just a particular curve. So I'm going to add a key over there. And I am going to add another key over here. And now I'm going to go ahead and select these keys right here and uh, set them to zero. And I'm going to retweak the, um, the tension of the curve so it does the acceleration. So it keeps the curves nice and curved over there like, that, like so. So now let's see the motion there. So you see the stretching. You see the squashing, and now let's go ahead and notice that we are, we're, we're not squashing until we get super close to the floor. And uh, let's go ahead and actually, why don't we go ahead and uh, we could technically select these keys and move them just one frame forward. Shift, like so. So we are stretched until we're there boom squash and up again all right that looks good nice and smooth okay and notice also that we when it does the squashing we're staying on the floor until it bounces right back up and then lifts off the floor Now that we have our animation there, just the way we want it, we will go ahead and I'll zoom out or, or just do a, a simple click in the middle and then just go frame. All right, so uh, now uh, we have this nice bouncy ball. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna press Control 2 to go to my default uh, workspace over here. So let's make sure that, there we go. And I'm going to save this as a prop so I'm gonna go to props custom prop and I'm gonna save this now I'm gonna save it on top of this one already because I already had it so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just uh, overwrite it I'm gonna say yes so we have this nice bouncy ball going on here and uh, all we're going to do, I'm going to show you next, is um, I'm going to load a, another scene here and show you how you can easily take one animated prop and just bring it into another scene. So we have our scene over there. And um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, double click on my prop over here. So let's go to my props. And we have our beach ball. Just double click on it and uh, we already are on a loop so there you go we have uh, our ni nice little animated bouncy ball here and again you can animate this uh, sphere to your heart's content make it as cartoony or as realistic as you want uh, but the basics are there and you saw how useful the curve editor was so this will conclude our tutorial i hope you enjoyed it and i will catch you i will catch you on the next one until then uh, have a good night take care